I used to climb trees when I was a little kid, and then I fell out of one. <laughs> I didn't get hurt or anything. I just uh, smashed all my Christmas presents. <laughs> Three years in a row. <laughs> and that is what I get for reaching for the stars. Uh, don't do that. It's crazy, man. Relationships are hard, man. They really are. They're difficult. I learned that by, I actually learned that by reading the Bible. Like I was reading those stories and I was like, dang, I bet all these people had really hard relationships. You know what I'm saying? Like I bet Mary and Joseph had a real hard relationship. You know? I bet Joseph was so excited about that bar and he got married. I bet it's like, hey, baby, look, I know there's no more room in the hotel, right? But I got this new place. It got a petting zoo and everything, baby. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fly. And Joseph's like, Mary, close your eyes. And Mary's like, oh my God, Joseph. <laughs> Joseph, you're so crazy. Oh my God. And he was like, ready, baby? One, two, three. Really, Joseph? <laughs> This is the best you can do, Joseph, for real. Really? That's why this ain't your baby. <laughs> you gotta read your Bible for that one. I know some of you guys. The kids today, they're not gonna make it. They're soft. <laughs> they're soft. <laughs> what is this elf on the shelf? <laughs> if, the, if you're not good, the elf is gonna go back and tell Santa. <laughs> we had something different when I was a kid. It was called belt on the shelf. <laughs> and if you misbehave, that belt came flying off that shelf. It came to life. <laughs> when I was a kid, my mom used to say to me, I will beat the black off you. <laughs> look at me, it dang near worked. Look at, look at me. I'm gonna show you something. Let me show you something. I wanna show, look at this. Oh like you're hiding inside me, sir. Look at this. I'm a black man with a farmer's tan, for goodness sake. So I grew up in Rochester, Minnesota, which is, and you know what I really remember? I remember when I was, Christmas time was always the best. We'd go to grandma's house and um, that, all the relatives were there, the good relatives, the bad relatives. And then the relatives you looked at and go, mm, gosh, some of the DNA is in me too. Ooh, this is scary. You ever had that? That's, those are the scary guys. And then this is how we do it. Now, I don't know how you guys do your Christmas. Oh, here, here's how we do it. So we all sit around in a big semicircle around the tree and we have to open up the gifts one by one by infinity, by one. There's 150 gifts. And then, and then uh, sometimes you have to pass the gift around because you get, what did you get? What did you get this year? Pass that around so we can all see that. There we go. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's one of those baskets filled with smelly soap. Oh, it's, it's pot pori. It's called pot pori. Oh. <laughs> Don't eat that. That's not candy. That's soap. Oh, oh that'll go nice in your bathroom. Yes, we remodeled our bathroom and uh, we took pictures of the before and after with a little flip book. Would you like to see that? Yes, we would like to see that. That'd be very entertaining. Here, let me videotape this moment. We'll watch it again. Ba 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 ba. And uh, Walmart, a return on Monday. Okay, good. <laughs> So we start from the youngest and go to the oldest, which means grandma, bless her heart, was at the end of the food chain of gifts. And I love my grandma dearly, but boy, she just milked the spotlight. You know, she just did. And uh, there are the kids in the starting blocks, and here's grandma. She's in her black dress with her pearls, and she smelled of Oude toilet that she got from the Woolworths, a big jug of it. Oh my God. Her hair, nice permy, permy, salon perm. Oh, mm, permy. Yeah. Permy smell. Here's my grandmother opening up her gifts, and she smiled like this, too. Okay, <laughs> smile, Grandma. That's good, all right. 
Here's my grandma opening up gifts. Maybe some of you can relate. Here she goes. <laughs> Is this for me? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, you shouldn't. This is just oh, such pretty wrapping paper. Is, can you see that? Isn't that pretty? Here, let's pass that around. Oh, oh, that was quick. I'm going to save this bow. That's a pretty bow. I'm going to take that and put it in my bow bag. In my bow bag. I always feel like I'm turning into Droopy the dog. My bow bag, sir. I'm so happy, my bow bag. <laughs> and there's a little card. No, it's a tag identifying the gift. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas to Grandma. <laughs> there was a little snowman on that. Here, let's pet. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> I'll just put that in my boo bag. And here's my favorite line. Here it comes. Here it comes. I don't want to rip the paper. <laughs> I want to save the paper for next year. Take it into my, my bedroom and iron it and put it in my special Christmas drawer because in my mind, I'm still in the Depression era. <laughs> So we'll start over here, or over here. I'll use my fingernail over here. Here's where kids come in handy. Kids just walk up to grandma and go, hurry up! It's a picture frame with us in it. And on the back, a coupon to Old Country Buffet. Move it! Where's grandpa? Grandpa died waiting for it to open up the gift. Move it! So colorful to watch those kids spontaneously combust underneath the tree. My, and my grandmother always set up this cardboard manger scene that she got from like Ben Franklin, and she had that shag carpeting. Do you guys remember the shag carpeting? So the, 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 you know, the, the manger scene never sat right. It looked, you know, so like the wise men are always like, oh, like the, hey, they're into the mirror, woo, you know, you know. They're just laying all over the place. And Joseph's neck got bent really bad, so he put a little fudsicle stick glued to his back. Looked like he was in a camel whiplash accident. And then the baby Jesus like disappeared for like two weeks. We finally found him in the kitty litter box. The grandma said, that's no place for the baby Jesus. <laughs> kind of right about that, grandma, so. Yeah. I don't drink. If you drink, please don't drink in. I know you don't. Watch cartoons. Cartoons and alcohol. I go, I got a little <laughs> back in the day. Turn into my favorite cartoon character from those Christmas claymation cartoons. Hermie the Elf from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Remember little Hermie when he talked? <laughs> His mouth went faster than the other words that actually came out of his mouth. I came home a little, I said, hi, Dad. I am Hermie. He said, great, when you're growing up now to be a drunk? I said, no, silly, I want to be a dentist. A dentist. Just always that awkward dude, man. I wanted to be cool. In high school, I thought first day of high school, I'm going to change everything. I'm going to turn over a new leaf. So I got a skateboard. I was like, I'm going to skateboard. That'll make me cool. And first day of high school, I ate it on my skateboard and broke my clavicle bone, which they can't set that bone. They just give you a padded brace that pulls your shoulders back like this. But you only have to wear it for the first eight weeks of high school. <laughs> Mom was like, we'll put a sweater on you and no one will know. So that was me in a Christmas sweater in August. <laughs> People are like, what is, is that our mascot? What are we, the Christmas trolls? What is that? That's the dude of But I thought she was Irish because her name is Molly. My wife's name is Molly. Sounds Irish, but she's not Irish. A uh, little curveball. I don't think we're going to have anyone in the room. My wife is Jewish. Do we have any Jewish friends here in Provo? <laughs> It's Roseanne Barr in the room. Did she come back to Utah? She's the only Jewish person in Utah I can think of. Now, my neighbor, we didn't have any Jewish families where I grew up, too, so I didn't know anything about the Jewish culture. But I'm learning, and I find with any religion or culture, there's more similarities than there are differences. There's a Jewish holiday, Yom Kippur. I remember asking my wife, I go, "Hun, how do Jewish people celebrate Yom Kippur? And she says, we don't eat. I go, that's identical to a holiday in my culture, St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, all right, all right. Okay. 
<laughs> but then she educated me. It turns out that's a serious holiday. I, I, I apologize. I go, what's the most festive Jewish holiday? My wife said, Christmas. <laughs> she goes, we get Chinese food and go to the movies. I go, hey, that's better than my Christmas. I guess, I mean, the thing is, there's, there's crazy people in New York City. That's the, they're just, they're, there's crazy. And there's crazy people all over. Um, there's crazy people here, okay? But usually you're in a car and they're not. <laughs> Think about it. Usually it's just like, oh, they just roll the window up, no more crazy. You don't... If you're next to a crazy person here, I mean, that's your fault. You married them or whatever, like that's just, you can't. In New York, you have no choice. This, I mean, they're on the subway, you're just, you ride the subway, you're next to every, the subway is a mental institution. It is. I mean, it takes people places, but that is its secondary purpose. It is. I was on the subway one day and this lady just walked on the subway. She started singing. All I want for Christmas is a fish sandwich. All I want for Christmas is a fish sandwich. All I want for Christmas is a fish sandwich. All I was like, come on, lady, we're in public here. <laughs> Guess what song has been stuck in my head for the last two years? I can't get rid of it. That woman should not be homeless. She's a hit maker, okay? She, she may be one of the greatest lyricists of our time. I've heard 11 Taylor Swift songs. I don't know the words. I know all the words to Fish Sandwich. And, and guess what? Nobody's wondering what to get her for Christmas. You know that one woman that rides a train, I want to get her a gift, but I just, a dude, she wants a fish sandwich. You gotta listen to the lyrics. You're getting caught up in the beat, man. Six of you are gonna wake up tomorrow morning. <laughs> You're gonna be in the shower. Be like, all I want, I hate Greg Warren. I hate him. I gotta get out of here pretty quick. But I'll leave you guys with this. So I love penguins, right? They're so cute. They're just the best animal in the world. Which is why I'm kind of mad at Santa Claus. Because the penguins hang out with Santa all year round. And it's a penguin's dream to fly. They're like, we want to fly, we want to fly, you know? And Santa has the magical ability to make animals fly to guide his sleigh. And he's completely ignoring the penguins. We want to fly, we want to fly. He's like, you'll never fly, you know? Instead, he's importing reindeer from Canada. <laughs> And I don't know if you know this, but Canada is like the North Pole's Mexico. <laughs> so the penguins are like, they're stealing our jobs! You know? Right? Because they don't understand, you know? Santa's the one doing the hiring, you know? But like, but they are up in arms, right? But they can't show it. So, I was doing that joke a couple weeks ago and a guy came up to me after the show and was like, uh, just so you know, uh, penguins don't live in the North Pole. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, either does Santa. Pretty fun having kids though, man. And I'm also a favorite uncle. Like I'm a favorite uncle, you know. Round of applause if you're a favorite auntie or uncle. Let me see where you guys are. <laughs> the uncles and aunties are the bomb, right? When we the bomb, you know what I'm saying? When we just that one. Most favorite uncles and aunties don't have their own kids, so they spoil their niece or nephew, you know, but I have kids, but I'm a favorite uncle. So my, my nephew wants to get an entertainment. He know I'm in entertainment, so he said, Unc, I'm having a play, will you come to it? I said, yeah, I'm coming to support you, man. So I went, and uh, it was at Christmas time. Every child came to the microphone, they said their little part for the play. It's my nephew's turn. I'm like, all right, go ahead, nephew. 
He came up. He, his line was, Jesus was born in the city of Bethlehem. We know that. He came to the microphone. He was like, hi. <laughs> Jesus was born in the city of Because Sunday school teacher was behind the curtain like, Bethlehem, Bethlehem. He was like, okay. He was born in the city of Birmingham. <laughs> I stood up like, yeah. I didn't know he was from Alabama. I didn't know. So the play went on. You know, you go collect your kids after the play. So my brother and I went up to him. And my brother put his arm around him like, it's going to be OK, son. This must not have been the first Sunday school play he messed up. Because the Sunday school teacher was like, no, it's not going to be OK. Now, he is 16 years old. <laughs> That's my guy. How old are you, son? 14. See, can you imagine forgetting that right there? <laughs> he like, nah. His dad like, he better not know that Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is not from Alabama. <laughs> On Talladega Nights, nice baby Jesus was from Alabama, but that's not. <laughs> and I've been seeing my family a lot more lately. I used to live in Chicago, moved back to my hometown in uh, Southern Illinois. It did not take long for weird things to start happening. I was riding along. Christmas Eve, my dad's driving. I've got my four-year-old son in the back seat. As we ride along on Christmas Eve, out of nowhere, a deer hops out and bam! Dad nails it. First thing my little boy says, Rudolph! <laughs> Dad goes, don't worry, buddy. We didn't kill him. I'm pretty sure he died when he fell out of the sky. <laughs> First thing, Holiday candles. You know what I'm talking about? The Christmas scented candles? The ones that are scented like evergreen, balsam, holly jolly gumdrop nonsense. First thing my wife does after Christmas ends, she boxes them all up. She runs and she puts them in a closet in the basement where we can't find them next year because that's a fun game. <laughs> First thing she does after boxing up all the Christmas scented candles, goes out and buys all new scented candles. <laughs> Why can't we use Christmas candles all year round? Are we worried we're gonna have guests come over in July? They're gonna walk in and smell them and be like, oh, what day is it? Is it Christmas? I've done zero shopping. Christmas coming up, I'm excited. I love Christmas. I love watching Christmas movies. My favorite Christmas show, though, is the Fireplace TV show. Do you guys watch the Fireplace TV? I love the Fireplace TV show. It's just a fireplace for three hours. Sounds boring, sucks me in every time. My mom's like, hey, dinner's ready. I'm like, no, the guy's here, the arm's here. Everybody get in here, the guy's here, he's poking the fire. It's like, it's not like a professional fire tender, just some chubby arm all hairy jabbing at it, it's great. But you don't have to wait for Christmas anymore. I found this out. You can now watch the Fireplace TV show anytime you want to on Netflix Instant Streaming. They have three episodes of the Fireplace TV. I binged them. I watched them all. I won't spoil the ending, but... It's because it's on Netflix, they have all the amenities of every other Netflix show, including closed captioning. It's true. I turned it on for three hours. In parentheses, it just says, crackling. <laughs> I switched it over to Spanish subtitles. It said, crepitante. I'm like, ooh. Very festive, you know? I'll watch that at Cinco de Mayo. That's cool. We even got a disagreement this past year for Christmas because it was like my son's first real Christmas and we got into a disagreement about Santa Claus and I, didn't, I did not want my son to get his picture taken with him because I grew up not liking him. I'll tell you why. My friends didn't understand. They're like, hey, he brings you gifts, he brings you candy. What don't you like about Santa? I was like, well, number one, he breaks into your house. Number two, he eats all of your cookies. Number three, if you climb down your steps quiet enough, you'll find him kissing your mommy. <laughs> That's not somebody I want in my house. That sounds more like my dad's brother. Oh, 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 
My dad hates that joke. <laughs> and that's why I say it. <laughs> He was like, hey, when you go do your special, you're not going to tell the Santa Claus joke. I was like, no! <laughs> yes, I am. My parents had their own love language. 57 years they were married before my mother passed away. That last Christmas we knew would be mom's last Christmas, so it was a special one. We knew this would be it. So anyway, we were all sitting around watching television, the movies, Wonderful Life, those Christmas movies. My mom's doing her crochet, my dad's in his chair. And he starts serenading my mother in their love language. 57 years of marriage. My mother didn't miss a beat. She didn't even say anything. She puts her crochet down, she goes into the kitchen, comes back 20 minutes later with two hot dogs and a soda pop for her husband. How cool is that? So that night, I'm laying in the fajita with Tammy. <laughs> and I'm talking, I said, did you see that today? She goes, what, my parents, did you see that whole thing? She goes, I did, and I go, you think we'll ever get there, you and me on that level? Tammy says, shoot me if we do. <laughs> you start hocking hairballs at me like that, it's over. <laughs> that was one of the most vile, disgusting things I've ever witnessed in my life. I almost chucked my dinner all over the kid's head. Wow, I thought it was beautiful. <laughs> I miss Merry Christmas. See, you, you were a younger kid. I realize you guys never grew up with Merry Christmas. When I grew up, everybody said, everybody said, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Lowenstein! <laughs> no Jews in Utah? Is that what's going on? <laughs> Because it wasn't about religion, it was about something we could celebrate together because it was a beautiful thing. But what do people say now? Happy holidays. I just say happy holidays because I don't always say Christmas because you don't believe in Christmas. I want to... <laughs> how, I don't care if you celebrate or not. How can you be offended by Christmas? Which part is more offensive? The peace on earth or the goodwill towards men rhetoric? <laughs> But here's the whole thing. The, the way it is, just be, look for, always look for consistency. That's all I'm getting at. Happy holidays, because we don't leave anybody out. What do you mean? There's tons of holidays in February. Nobody says happy holidays in February. I say what it is, happy Valentine's. Oh, do you believe in love? <laughs> Let me tell you about December. There's two religious holidays, okay? There's, uh, there's uh, Hanukkah and there's Christmas. There's one cultural holiday, Kwanzaa, and then there's one that nobody understands, Boxing Day. Go look on your calendar, December 26th, Boxing Day. What does it mean? Nobody knows. It's the day after Christmas. Apparently it's all the fights you get in trying to return the junk you got the night before. I got a fruitcake, we don't take him. <laughs> Happy Boxing Day! But I can assure you that we are not spying on you, uh, but uh, it is, it's actually become much easier to tell if you're naughty or not because of uh, TikTok. <laughs> And I would like to inform you that if you just even have an OnlyFans account, you're already on the list. <laughs> the fact that you don't know what OnlyFans is, and don't know why that was funny, speaks well for all of you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, of course, people will say, uh, well, if I'm naughty, am I going to get a lump of coal? Now, that we, used to, we used to give coal, but over the years, it has come to be rather cost prohibitive. Uh, and so we've, we do other things now. Instead of coal, we just uh, give out uh, gift cards to Applebee's. <laughs> and or scented candles. So, so now you know if anyone in your family receives scented candles or Applebee's gift cards, don't lend them money, is all. <laughs> Probably a good safe bet. Now, of course, uh, recently, uh, many people have had a lot of concerns about Rudolph 
In fact, the story of Rudolph, uh, they, they think that it's somehow glamorizing bullying. Well, I can assure you there was just a lot of misunderstanding about this, this situation with Rudolph because he, in fact, was not banned from all the reindeer games. <laughs> Only a couple. <laughs> Red light, green light. And just between you and me, he was absolutely horrible at hide-and-seek. <laughs> Once you know that that joke always goes much better with a younger demographic. <laughs> just, so, just so you know. Yeah, I think it's adorable what so many Americans don't know about Canada. Did you guys know that we celebrate Thanksgiving on a different day? Yeah. Did you know that? I was talking to a woman in the States that freaked when I told her. She's like, get out! Do you celebrate Christmas on a different day, too? I'm not kidding. I said, yes, yes, we do. In Canada, Jesus is a Gemini. <laughs> you know, he's got a twin. <laughs> he's a... All right, never mind. Let's move on. Let's, uh... and it, may, it makes California very diverse, which, which is fine, but also very politically correct because they don't want anyone to be offended by anything. So they, they didn't call it a Christmas party. I said, it's a Christmas party. And they said, well, no, don't, don't say that. Uh, and I said, well, then I'll, I'll say Happy Hanukkah, too. And they're like, no, because then you'll have to say, have a beautiful Boxing Day and a crazy Kwanzaa and a terrific Tim Kat. Just forget it. It's a <laughs> holiday party. Just call it a holiday party. And they changed the songs. They didn't play I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas uh, for two reasons on that one. And... Um, <laughs> Frosty the Snowman is now Caitlin, a person of snow. <laughs> we three kings of Orient are very offended that you would say Orient. You can't say Orient anymore because they don't want to offend Asians. And you can't say Spick and Span anymore because they don't want to offend Latinos. Yep, you, you have to say Spick and Spaniard. It's very, very touchy. 